see was how Leftwood settled in after a, you know, just a little bit of a ripple in the first. Here's, here's good. Yeah, a couple walks in the first, some deep counts. Didn't get it, didn't get a pitch here or there that, you know, could have been called a strike, borderline pitch, but you know, got to be able to work around that. They had a hard ground ball up the middle for a run. And after that, he, like you said, he, he settled in. I don't even know if he wasn't settled in in the first. It just, you know, a couple deep counts didn't go his way, and before you know it, you know, you're, you're chasing a run. But I've said this all week and last three weeks, all year, really. It's, it's a really, it's a really resilient group of guys. You know, whether you're down one nothing, whether you're down something crooked, whether you're chasing five or six, you know, in the middle innings, the guys just come out and play hard. You know, they play hard, they, they play well defensively, they, they don't run the bases pretty hard, they're looking for extra bases, they're having competitive at bats. I don't think they're, you know, nothing really phases them, which is, is fun to watch. What do you think Jack's done so well since he got here? I mean, he obviously had good results in Lynchburg and most of the same here. What, what has allowed him to hit the ground running as he's gotten up there? Obviously, his, his stuff is really good, so there's no makeup is great, right? He's a competitor, he's a tough kid, he's a back alley type kid, he's a guy you want to you, know, you, you, you take down a back alley if the fight was breaking out, that's the type of guy he is. But his incredible tempo, all that stuff is great. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to have good stuff, right? You got to have good shit in the mountain. You said you're surprised Jonathan's still here, he hit the 440 footer tonight to get you going. What is he, I mean, especially in August, what's allowed him to really step up? Yeah, we talked about this the other night. I mean, he just, it's, it's intent and his focus has been really, really good. I mean, he's hes super locked in to his, his routines right now and um, feels really comfortable with where he's at from a just a workload standpoint throughout the course of the day. He's, you know, he's working hard defensively, comes out for his early work. He, he knows what he needs to get done. He's, a little more active, I think. If you if you followed him enough and watched him enough, he's a little bit more active, um, you know, on the defensive side of the baseball as well. When balls are put in play, he's all he's moving a little bit more. You know, I think the game's starting to slow down a little bit for him, and that's a good thing, right? As a as a young player, as you continue to get older and continue to mature throughout the course of a long season, you're hoping that you know the the situational awareness adapts along with your you know your your, your wherewithal and your affordability so to speak in the course of the game. Well, what's it say about him that that was an 0-2 pitch and he you know, took a big rip 0-2 and was able to hit the ball that far? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, can, he can do damage. If there's pitches in the zone for him to bang, he'll bang it. So, you know, he obviously showed that tonight. He was a switch hitter late in his career. Do you think that Maybe it took some time for him to kind of readjust to going back to hitting the one side of the plate or anything yeah, like that? I don't know. I actually don't know the history of his. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know it before I got here. Uh, he's only been a right-hand hitter since I've seen him. So. Yeah, very well. Could be. That's a, that's a, you know, that's a you know, poignant comment. I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Uh, Christian Cairo is back in the lineup for the first time in a couple of months tonight. How nice would it be to see him get a couple of doubles, made a nice play in the field. Yeah, just great to have him back. I mean, he, you know, he, he, again, he plays hard. You see how he plays. He's always into the games. He's bouncing around. Whether he has a good at bat or a poor at bat, he's able to separate the offensive and defensive side of things for himself. So, um, you know, obviously, two big knocks for us there. We weren't able to get him in. I don't think we were. I think we stranded him at second both times. But you know, puts a little bit of heat on him and increases pitch counts. I mean, there's no surprise there when you're in minor league baseball pitch counts are a big thing and the more that we can extend innings even if we don't score runs we can extend innings against a guy that's pretty tough from down there like their pitcher is you know you might get him out of the game an inning earlier and that inning earlier might wind up being a different just real quick first impression of Elvis dress yeah I've never seen him till tonight to be honest with you so I mean my impression is the same as yours I guess like he's you know he's whatever he is 94 95 93 to 95 um, pretty loose and free and easy 94 though like I, you know, it doesn't look 94 to be quite frank so um, yeah did a really good job nothing really faced him walked a guy you know, had a guy on base and was able to just kind of settle in and do his thing so um, interesting to see how he is you know his next outing probably not try to put him in the highest of leverage spots like we did tonight but I just kind of want to see what he could do <laughs> we've had some games in hand we've been playing pretty well so I'm like I was going to see what he, see what he could do with in the ninth inning with a two-run lead, having never, I don't even think half our players even know his first game, to be honest with you. So. You got a nice winning streak going. You're well above 500. You're in the thick of a chase for the second half in the playoffs. Are the, are the fellows conscious of that yet? Have they not 
come around to that, or is is the competitive juice flowing because of where, uh, where you are? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think holistically they're they're dialed into the standing, so to speak. They probably know, to be honest with you. It's not something I've heard of them talk about there. To be honest with you, they, they like winning games. They like when the scoreboard's on. They like to be able to you know, have a barometer for their hard work during the course of the day and during the course of the week. So the scoreboard's turned on. They want to tilt in their favor. And whether that's seven in a row, six in a row, lose seven in a row, I mean, they want to be, they want to come out on the right end of, of the scoreboard each night. So I don't think they probably know what the standings are. And to be quite frank, I probably wouldn't if you guys don't tell me every night that I see you guys. So Seems like a, very a, lot, a lot of games like left, right? you got a lot of games left. you got four and a half weeks left, and there is four full weeks left. So... 6, 12, 24 games, 25, 26, 26 games or so left, and that's, that's a lot of baseball left. It's so. like a very different attitude in the second half, too. I mean, a lot more, lot more focus and intensity, it just feels like, or maybe just yeah, I mean, guys are, are getting locked in as the season goes on. Locked in, comfortable with the daily work, understand what my expectations are, wanting to play better, wanting to play hard, seeing guys move up. You know, that's tantalizing, right? If you're a young player, you see half your teammates, not half of them, but you see a handful of guys get called up to Akron, like you want to be the next guy. So it's an opportunity for you to fill some shoes. And then at the end of the day, it's also 85 and sunny out, and not 42 say, and sunny. Yeah, weather, yeah, I mean, who the hell wants to play in April and May when it's 40 <laughs> degrees? You do. I, I do.